purpose being to actually drop that bomb on uh, the tar. We hit, well, we're, we're taking over. We're taking over my show about the about it's Diana war. Monfort, and she's taken over. The show has been changed. All right, yes. this is great. Welcome, guys. Hi, Bonnie Finberg. Hi. Come over, get grab a seat. We're changed. We're totally changing. Here's I'm not going to play another time. I'm going to have to play my video Should and of uh, my commentary. Great. Oops. Your sweater. Your yes, sweater. toss it over there. It's great. And Diane, welcome to my thank show you, to let them you. talk. Bonnie, you've oh, been God. here before. Thank yeah. you. Is this right? Yeah. Is clip, oh, though? okay. Uh, right? You don't have the clip that goes with that, right? Did the clip fall? Is it on the ground? I don't know. Um, ding, 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 how about? Ding, 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 and here's your. Ding, ding, all right. Here's one here. But uh, you want me to stick it in or what? Yes. Big boy. Stick it in, big boy. <laughs> yeah. All right. And uh, oh, I, like I don't see the clip, but I think we can hear Is you. Okay. Hard yeah, nasty. I think we're all right. I think we can hear you. Okay. Well, welcome. So, my God, Kali's day, right? We, you know, Kali, is is that, uh, this is your new book. This is my new which book. Which I heard you read last night parts of, right? Yes, I was so glad you came. It was great. You came? And yes, I came by. Oh. Yes, yes, I did. I lived nearby there, so it was, it was oh, easy right. just to that's cruise right, right over. And, uh, and I, you know, got the email, and, and Kali being uh, uh, the goddess of fire. Uh, well, um, as I was saying earlier today, um, Kali is... Uh, she kills all the demons, she destroys all the bad stuff, uh, and then uh, the world just becomes this void, and then she, Shiva, who is the, also a destroyer, but he's the creator also, um, he's sleeping, right? Because everything's all gone now. And so she recreates the world by straddling him and having intercourse with him. And then they have this orgasm in white light. And then. Oh, come closer. Yes. Everybody then, come closer. And then everything Thank gets you. recreated through their orgasm. So I kind uh -huh. of like that story. Wow. You know, it's funny because <laughs> I, I was just talking, to, I was killing some time earlier talking about some report I was doing on the new atom bomb that was just de being developed by oh, our, wonderful. our wonderful just Air what Force. We need. And, you know, and, you know, of course, the famous quote from, uh, from Oppenheimer when he watched the first atom bomb go off in New Mexico was, I've become, I become Shiva, destroyer of worlds. Right, right, well, which, yeah. right which is right. interesting, uh, which we have a great segue. And then, Hopefully we'll yeah. talk about more positive <laughs> things than blowing up the world. So, um, Well, who knows? That could be a positive thing. Right. As long as it's after I'm dead. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For the rest of us. All right. Well, we're going to live a long time. We played a little long time to keep you all alive. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> Bonnie, uh, tell Literally me, so happy. how long have you been working on this book? Oh, I, I started it in 1997. It was started out as a travel memoir. And someone said to me, well, what about this? You should really put this in it. So I said, really? I don't want to put that in it. So they said, no, you really should put that in it. So I started putting that in it, which I won't get into. And then um, I had to fictionalize it at that point. Uh -huh. So I fictionalized it. And then uh, once I did that, it's like right now, it's just, you know, there's nobody in here who represents any one person or any one event. What, what did it Say start? it safely. What did it yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. Oh, what, what, this good for that. Now, what, 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 what did you start to tell before you decided to go on the fiction? Well, it record? was a, just a travel memoir. Yeah. It, you know, it was basically about my time in Nepal. And because um, I was going there quite a bit, and I'd had some very sort of, life-changing experiences. I'd met some incredible characters and I would I'd go walking around in the street and talk to people and uh, I got to know people. They took me to their homes and you know I, I really got to know them. They became friends and um, I would go back to my room and I would just write everything down. My memory was better in those days mm -hmm. and people would say the most amazing things and I would just tell me these stories and things would happen and I would just write everything down and word for word. I mean, there's a lot of dialogue. It's a dialogue heavy novel as somebody pointed out. Let me hold it up for folks to look at so they can see the cover. It's a beautiful cover. Oh, it's James, Ro James Romberger, the graphic novelist, did the cover. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and here you are on the back. Yes. Hey, you are great. <laughs> And we're going to zoom, which is wonderful. That's and, an Ira uh, Cohen photograph, my dear friend Ira. Yeah, you mentioned him last night. He's he was on my radio show years was ago. He? Yes, oh. many years ago we were on. He was Ira. on my radio show, yeah. and when I was in WBAI, and uh, there's Bonnie Kali's day. So these are stories about your travels in Nepal, mostly. Yeah. Then there's a, there's a s there's a part where they sh one character goes off to India to find these two orphaned children. And uh, that's the. It's sort of a trans. You know, all the characters go through some transformation. Mm -hmm. So. 
Well, so uh, were you guys interviewing earlier? Right? Yes, we well, were. You, you're a great interviewer, so well, so are you. Interview away. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> my, continued. we run into each other again. It's five minutes <laughs> later. <laughs> Bonnie just did her second appearance on the Diana Montfort show, which is my show, and uh, we were under the gun time-wise because we knew she had to get onto Paul's show, which is live. We're dead. She, he's alive. <laughs> you know. And so. when can people see your version? Oh, uh, so. We're on film, so we're never sure exactly when it's going to be shown, but very soon. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, do you want to read us a segment? Of I the would book? love to. I think that's a good way to start. I yeah. would love to. I'll read a yes. different segment than what I read on Diana's show. It's well, remember, we're on film, so they won't see my show for a while. So. It's okay, but okay. You know. there's plenty to read. It's a big there's book. plenty to read. Um, let's see. Where did I end? Okay. Uh, I turn up beside. Oh, I, sh I guess I should say that um, she's kind of walking around now, and she's thinking about leaving this this Nepali uh, town where she's been staying, and uh, she's been hanging around with this sort of street guy, and um, she's just kind of thinking now she wants to go and find these two girls, but before she does, um, she's going to go for a walk. Let's just say that. Um, I turn up a side street off Sukuldoka and sit on a wall. People are decorating their floats. Young men, thickly made up, are dressed in their sisters' saris and jewelry. Little boys dance around in monkey masks as little fanged demons and shivas with painted-on mustaches curling up their cheeks. People pass trays of fruit and wedges of spiced cucumber. An old woman goes from house to house carrying a bowl of tiny spiced peas. She comes toward me with the last of them. I hold out my hand, and she scoops some of them into my palm. They're spicy and fresh. I sit for a little while watching the activities. Then I'm suddenly seized by a sharp pain in my gut. I run upstairs and make it to the bathroom just in time to throw up. I lie down on the bed. Sometimes I'm not sure whether I'm on my back or my stomach. What are they doing, Henry, Harry, Ivan, Stella? This is something else, isn't it? I can't figure it out. I crawl to the bathroom, sit next to the tub, and stick my head under the tap. I lie on my back. Light pools in my peripheral vision, collects into prisms, and glides across my eyes. Multicolored hieroglyphs wriggle on the ceiling. I wonder, maybe if I walk, keep walking in one direction, maybe I'll feel better. Walk in one direction. It's just attitude, altitude, the spirit of the moment. Altitude in the spirit of the moment. The knees of the gray Nawari suit are damp. Along the street, men nod and laugh. I smile back. Butter lamps blaze, sound increases and fades in the unrecognizable street. Children burn straw effigies dangerously close to the flames. I walk further and come to Dattatraya, knowing if I keep going, I'll end up in darker, wider spaces and will have to turn around and come back the same way. I see the woman in the red salwar peering down from a roof. Everyone's faces are smudged with lamp black. I'm suddenly in front of the sunny restaurant with no sense of how I got here. I touch the walls for balance and go upstairs to the terrace. I order bottled water and rice. Across the square, the woman in the red salwar comes out from a building and sits on the temple platform, surrounded by burning effigies. A boy speaks to her, pointing to a street leading out of the city. She follows him, and they disappear down the hill. From the opposite direction, a commotion is approaching with the Bimson t statue. The Nawa Durgas follows, s turning through the street and stopping at the bottom of the slope. I'm suddenly aware of a sashura, as if I exist in the spaces between sounds, part of a cruel intimacy that separates me from all that's going on. The procession halts in front of the Bhairava temple. Men carry a litter with a golden idol blackened with soot. They set it down in front of the altar. Mothers with infants on their hips pull small children by the hand to the shrine, dab their babies' heads with red powder, and press bits of prasad into their mouths. I turn around to pay the bill. Suddenly everything is quiet. The crowd is gone. Only fire and smoke. Those recurrent dreams of flying, rising from a city street and gliding just above the rooftops, able to fly by sheer will always just about to take off, standing on the pavement, people hanging around watching, saying, you can't do that, you must be dreaming. But I'm awake, I say, watch me. I rise above the city, flying over blocks of building with yellow lit windows in the blue dusk. 
I could fly over these temple roofs, draw everything to me, everything below, above the density, the valley. Or maybe I'm falling, smashing against the stones, and a motorcycle screeches to a halt. Kirtan singers file past, the singing boy, the flute players, the brass band, my cheek to the ground, things I've become used to stepping around, my face touching them, ears and nostrils open. Thank you very much, Bonnie, for that. Wow. So you create great characters. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what the reviews say, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what it sounds like. And uh, tell us a little bit about Nepal. You've been there a few times. What's Nepal like? Oh, it's wonderful. Um, Where do you go when you go to when you visit? Well, it's interesting. I I, I stay in the Kathmandu Valley. Uh, most people go to Nepal to go trekking, which is a very beautiful thing to do. But I'm more interested. I, being an urban person, I like cities. Mm -hmm. um, but the city where I go is not. It's not Kathmandu. It's a smaller city outside of Kathmandu, and. Um, I I just love, you know, walking through the streets and the markets and the people and the little shops and they've got lots of artisans who do wonderful, wonderful carving and and the people in the shops, it's not like here, you know, when you go into I made friends with shop owners because I, I love these these paintings, they're called tankas of the different deities. So I would go in and I, I became extremely friendly with one of them and um, you know, I met their families, they take me home for dinner, and we go on a motorcycle ride around the valley and all these different places. And I just, I love architecture and I love, I love urban life. And it's, but it's urban life almost on a tribal scale. I mean, it's just smaller and it's more intimate. And, um, you know, there's not one corporate logo within sight. Right. Although I haven't been there in a while. Okay. So. <laughs> it might have found its way in no McDonald's. Oh, God, no. Nothing no. like that. No, I mean, occasionally you'd go past, there's stores, a lot of the stores are like these little holes in the wall, occasionally you'll see something that has a Kodak sign because mm. they sell film, you know. Okay. When, when they had film, now they, I don't know what they have now, but. Uh, very interesting. And so uh, it seems friendly, like. Are the people are very friendly. How do you friendly. meet people? You just go to a coffee shop or? Oh, people come up to you when you're a Westerner. They want to talk to you. They want to practice their English. And, mm -hmm. um, they, you know, it's, I India's different than Nepal. India, um, it's more the people, the street people in India are much more aggressive in asking you for stuff. In Nepal, people, of course, I haven't been there in about maybe six years. I don't know when I was last mm -hmm. there, but um, they just seem more sensitive. They don't push as much, uh -huh. and it's interesting because I remember they were, uh, you know, this is not coming from me, so I don't want to. Mm -hmm. Get letters about that I'm biased or anything, but the, the, a lot of the Nepalis were upset because a lot of Indians were moving into their area, and they're much more aggressive as bus their businesses are. They're much more aggressive in their business, and um, there was a little bit more street crime happening with the teenage Indian kids, and then the Nepali kids started picking up on the style, and they mm -hmm. were learning how to do that. So things were sort of changing. Um, but people were, s were saying, you know, it's, it's changing, it's different. Because Nepal is a very, uh, I find Nepalis to be very sweet, mostly. Mm -hmm. But there's a, you know, there's, a, there's also a socioeconomic. There's been some political troubles there. Again. I don't know much about it, but. Again, uh, yeah. Did, did, um, was that a problem at all while you were there? Never, never. I mean, when that was going on, it was all an internal thing, and th I remember, actually, the city where I stayed was um, the head of the Communist Party there. Th it was the, the uh, Communist Party of Nepal, the CPN, and um, they used to go through the streets with torches. It was very, it was like something Torchlight parade? Yeah, they would have torches, like, yeah. you know, young people with torches. It was like something out of a 1930s Frankenstein movie, <laughs> <laughs> and they would wear Che Guevara T-shirts. Mm -hmm. They loved Che Guevara. Sure. And red hats. Uh -huh. And because that's the color of, you know, th I think they considered themselves Maoists, I think. They were very naive, I think. That's just my opinion. <laughs> but in any case, um, they would wear, you know, red, the red mm -hmm. Che Guevara T-shirt sure. and the red, and sometimes the red hats would say Marlboro on them because that's how you get a red hat. A ca a For the Marlboro baseball. Oh. cigarettes. Yeah, right. baseball. Cap. Marlboro Man, the ultimate revolutionary. He's dead, though. You've smoked <laughs> yeah. too much. <laughs> right. Wow, Bonnie. Bonnie. Finberg. Finberg, right. I didn't want to say 
it the wrong way. Right, you know? I know. Some people get Feinberg a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> right. <laughs> Frankenstein. Oh, oh, okay. Frankenstein. All right, that's a great movie too. A great movie. Another great movie. Uh, but uh, that so it's a wonderful book and a wonderful experience that fed this book. Now, uh, you know, we met when you were you were on the show uh, a with few Jim months back Feast. with Jim Feast, right? And uh, talking about uh, how you worked on Jews. Right, Jews side. on the Lower East Side, uh, um, the book by our friend uh, Clayton, Patterson. Clayton Patterson, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, you're, uh, uh, do you consider yourself a professional writer, someone who makes a living as a writer? Is that possible? Oh, is that is that necessarily go together? Ah, uh, very know. good point. Yeah, right. That's I don't know. I don't know. Um, no, I don't make my living as a writer. Right. Is it possible? Well, yeah. Don DeLillo does it. Yeah. Thomas Pinchon does it. Mm -hmm. John a few Jonathan do. Frank Franzen does it. Right, that's true. Those are three well-known. <laughs> right. May I ask a question? Yeah. The look he just gave me on it. Yes. I shouldn't ask a question. <laughs> no. But no, do, do you no. plan? Uh, do you hope to, in time, make of course a who living from it? Well, who wouldn't? But you know, it's like any any big producers out there would like to make this into a film. That's any big producers out there would <laughs> like to make me. <laughs> so, right, a film, so this possibly could be a film. I think it'd make a great film. Mm -hmm. I think it would make a really good film. Would you shoot it on, on uh, in Nepal, on locations? Oh, yeah, there's great locations. New York, Nepal, India, what? Is that where it all takes place, the book? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a very locations. New York book. It starts out in New York, It's because I also love New York. This is my home. Are you in the book? Me, are personally? You, yeah, are you a character in the book? No, no. No. Badadu. <laughs> <laughs> So there's no way. So, so it's not. Don't like look for me in this book. Right, I'm not right. in there. I'm only. I'm on the back, actually. Right. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, we won't look for you in the book. Um, but is it about a person who travels and and this is their experience as they travel? No, it's it about, about it's about these people who travel. But I mean, it's not about travelers. It's about people who uh, they're they're sort of, you know, what we used to call in the '60s and '70s freaks. Sure. <laughs> They're not around anymore. I remember them. They were very. I think I was one back in those days. I think I was too. Yeah. Um, we were born three days apart. Same right. year, same. Really? Yeah. What, what's your, when's your birthday? Mm. I'll be sure. I do the year too. You know yeah, you go. May twenty eighth, nineteen fifty six. May twenty fifth, nineteen fifty six. There mm -hmm. you go. March seventh. <laughs> a Pisces, how cool is that? Right, Pisces. Right. I'm a left-handed Pisces. Another I'm M month. Very cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Great. I think I have some Scorpio somewhere, which keeps a me rising a little more grounded. You know. I'm a Gemini. Are I you still too. a Gemini? I'm still, still a Gemini. Yes. Gemini, right? See, we're all with a about moon in Capricorn and a Virgo rising. That's right. Fine. Divided. <laughs> well, well, how can people find out more about your book? Well, they could Google it. Okay. Holly's day, and right? if they were to Google it, they would find it, you know, in various places where maybe some of their friends bought it. Well, excuse me, as <laughs> I said on my show, if you know someone who buys Callie's Day by Bonnie Finberg at Amazon.com, I'm not saying that you should buy it at Amazon.com, but if you have a friend who buys Callie's Day by Bonnie Finberg at Amazon.com, you can then borrow Callie's Day by Bonnie Finberg, which was bought at Amazon.com or but at the St. Mark's Bookshop or where else? Well, uh, well, what I was going to say is if you want to go look through it and just thumb through it, you could do that at um, St. Mark's Books and you could do it at Book Culture on 112th Street on the west mm. side. And virtually non-profits. <laughs> unnameable <laughs> books. Uh, sadly, yes. <laughs> sadly, virtually non-profits. Unnameable right. books and also yeah. Blue Stockings. Blue Stockings. I love Blue Stockings. Wonderful. Ooh. That's a good place to go because that really is non-profit. Well, it's, it's Autonomy Media. Yeah, autonomy. It's yeah. on their website. And it's well. great. Blue oh, Stockings autonomy is media, fabulous. Right. They yeah, did my, uh, my IP game book with uh, Dana Beal. The IP game story. Right. Oh, I had a dear friend. Did you know Chris Bava? Yes. I'm friends with him on face Facebook. Uh, well, he's Facebook. gone, unfortunately. Oh, I'm sorry. You know that. that? Oh, you didn't oh, know, I didn't that? know that? I didn't oh, well, I won't get into that now. All right, that's yeah. something to know. No, he was a dear, dear friend. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. know that he passed. Um, we were, we are friends on Facebook, and you know, if people continue on on Facebook. I know, I know. And you don't know unless you notice they haven't been posting or somebody tells you. Well, uh, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm <laughs> really glad that your book is uh, is uh, is is self-published. If it was through Autonomy Media, no, it's not self-published. Not self-published. They took it on. Oh no, phone. yeah, no, they don't do self-published books. Oh, I thought Autonomy Media. I thought we um, my I began book was self-published. Oh, was it? I thought it was, but that was a number of years ago. Oh, maybe some people yeah. are. No, this was not. I did not. Yeah. No, oh, okay, this is great. So they do. They they publish it as a regular publisher. That's why it took me so long because I didn't want to self-publish. Uh -huh. I just didn't want to do it. I see. Why not? 
because I worked really hard on this, and I thought somebody should Peggy? respect the work enough. If they're not going to, if I'm not going to make money from it, I should at least be able to have somebody pay to mm -hmm. produce this book right. and try to sell it. So you know. That's interesting. That's a, a I held out right? as long as I could. Yes, but uh -huh. excuse me, I've never written or self-published a book, but I know many who have, and many self-published books are used in bibliographies of non-self-published books. Oh no, uh -huh. I just this, I have nothing against self-published books. Mm -hmm. It's just that for me, that's just how I I kind of. Would you ever mm -hmm. consider self-publishing? I hope not. Right. No, then you have to distribute yourself. Enough. Enough. And yeah, that's it's the hard it's part. hard enough when you're working with such a small publisher. But if you're self-publishing, it's really hard. And I really want to spend my time writing my next book. I don't want to spend my time. What doing is your next PR. book going to be about? Um, Do you know? It's about uh, a gay couple at various stages of their lives. Um, and I, I don't want to say too much about it because it's really still in development, and I'm sort of finding my way. But there's. Uh, Oh, a serial killer, and uh, one of them is a, um, he's a Eastern religion scholar uh, who is, well, I don't want to get into that. Where does it take place? Where is the location? Um, it takes place in New York, and uh, it has some scenes in Paris, actually. It, some of it takes place in Paris, where I was living for a while. And do you have a title yet, or is that a... Yes, I do. But that's part of the secret. That's the... We have to uh, wait. I'd rather, yeah, I'd yeah, rather. Yeah, that's good. That's great. We should wait for it. I once made the mistake of telling somebody <laughs> about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not Everybody has advice, right? If that moment on. No, it's not the. I'd, I'd rather just you know, mm -hmm. keep my ideas to myself. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> Don't worry, them. Valley and of the Dolls was a else, great time. Especially if it's on TV. Yes, yeah, so, right. Yeah. right. Okay, you don't want me to run with your great idea. And that's, I'm sure because this is a beautiful book here. So Thank you. You're bubbling great ideas and. Uh, uh, so glad to see you doing this. We have a minute and a half left. Is there something about the book you'd like to tell us that I haven't asked you about? Or hmm, let's see. What can I tell you about the book that you haven't asked me about? Well, I, I think um, what I'd like to say about the book is it has some very dark. It's it has some very dark moments. It has moments of humor, but I c I really wanted it to have a positive ending without it being sentimental. So um, I'm hoping I achieve that. So there's hope. In the book. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of, I, I didn't want to, there's so much hard, there's so much crap in the world, you know. I didn't want to add to it by making a sad, hopeless ending. Uh -huh. So I tried to make it a positive ending. But th it's still not, a, it's not a predictable ending. Okay, so, yeah. great. That's yeah. the best type. <laughs> yeah. One that you can't predict. So, uh, Bonnie, uh, let me show folks again your book, Kali's Day. Right and uh, taking place in uh, New York and Nepal and uh, India. India, wow! And is uh, Nepal and India are they very similar or very different? Well, they speak a similar language. Nepali is like Hindi, so if you speak one, you you can usually speak the other. Um, but they're different. They are different in significant yep. ways. Yeah, India is an amazing place. I mean, it's a very Geographically, it's very varied, and culturally, it's very varied. It's Bonnie a huge, Finberg. huge country. Thank you very much for joining and sharing your book and your reading with us on Let Them Talk, and we'll see you next week.